Tonight on American Playhouse, join us in a zany, humorous, and affectionate celebration of the great American Fourth of July and other disasters by Gene Shepard. Prepare to witness the glorious triumphs as well as the grandiose catastrophes that James Broderick as the old man, Matt Dillon as young Ralph, and Barbara Bolton as mom all encounter on one hell of a fourth. programs made possible by this station and other public television stations. The Program Fund of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Oh God, I love I-95. All the way from the main border down to Tennessee Williams House in Key West. You know, I'll bet if I had a buck for every blue-haired lady that this river of dreams is carried down to Miami Beach, I could retire. I could buy the Bahamas. <laughs> oh, look at that. Good old I-95, my old friend. I love it. I love it. Oh, God, I can't wait. I can't wait. You gotta see this place to believe it. <laughs> You know, this joint makes Disneyland look as prosaic as Plainfield, New Jersey. There it is! There it is! South of the border! I've been seeing those signs for 200 miles! Oh, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is one of the great American institutions. How many times have you seen those little bumper stickers? South of the border. And you figured that everybody that has one had been down to Tijuana? They've been down to North Carolina? South of the border in South Carolina, that is. <laughs> Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Great Scott, look at this. A supermarket of Roman candles and lady crackers. The old man would have loved this. He was a true fireworks freak. <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. The old man would have loved Pedro's. <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> oh, but let me tell you, this stuff is not like the artillery the old man used in his prime. <laughs> oh, this is terrific. Now look at that, a whole shopping cart, just like the A&P, full of stuff that goes off with a bag. Dynamite, heat, excitement, all intermingled in the great American ritual, the 4th of July. Hey, what is there about a solid molar-rattling explosion? It sets the blood a tingle and brings roses to the cheeks. <laughs> oh boy, did I ever tell you about the greatest 4th of July ever? About the parade and Wilbur Duckworth and those unbelievable batons and what he did with them. About me, Ralph, and the disastrous blind date. Or the picnic where Flick and his friend put the whammy on me. Or my mother. She believed she could brillo away all the evil in the world if she could just get the time. And that summer, she had the wash rag madness. And the old man, one of the first crabgrass fighters and the greatest fireworks maniac of his time. And Ludlow Kissel at the Dago bomb that struck back. It was all there, that great American Fourth of July and other disasters. It all began here, in that great inverted bowl of darkness. That Stygian bowl of Omar Khayyam, the Midwest. That summer, I was working in the mill, the steel mill. God, it was hot. Delivering the mail. Home in Indiana, 
If Chicago was Carl Sandburg's city of the broad shoulders, then Holman had to be that city's broad rear end. Our Sears Roebuck ACDC radio. <laughs> it came from the factory with the hum built in. Now you heard me. You eat your breakfast. You're not old enough for cherry bombs. My kid brother, Randy, his art form was the wine. You wanted to kill him. You'll shoot your eye out. Boy, they got an article in here how life's gonna be in 1980. Machines are gonna do all the work and we won't have to do nothing. People all have their own private helicopters, and you push a button and the food comes right out of the wall. That I'd love to see. Your house cleans itself automatically. <laughs> you don't have to sleep, you just take this pill. Get out of here. Just take this pill. The silly stuff they print. Where's your watch, bag? Now what? Ralph, would you turn down the radio? I can't hear what he's saying. Where's your watch, bag? I'm going blind! He wants a wash rag! Oh, God. Where the hell is the damn wash rag? We don't have any wash rags. What do you mean we don't have any wash rags? What are you, the laundry, all of them? I put them in the mail. Come on, quick, kid, give me a wash rag. Here, use a towel. I put the wash rags in the mail. Let me get this straight. Did you actually say you put the wash rags in the mail? All of them? Mm -hmm. Why? Um, I sent all five of them to the name at the top of the list. Name at the top of the list, yes. What list? The list in the letter. What letter? Then. You put your name at the bottom, and you mail it off with five wash rags. And within seven weeks, you get back more than you'll ever need in a lifetime. You know, if you break one of those chain letters and don't mail it on, you're supposed to have bad luck for one year. The first shot had been fired in my mother's nuttiest caper. The old man thought she was crazy. Ah, my old marching band. What a motley crew. You got the beat! Get those knees up! My left shoulder still aches from that sousaphone. When the wind comes screaming down off Lake Michigan, as it does 300 days of the year, blowing a sousaphone into a mean crosswind puts iron in the sole and muscles on the shoulder. Now, there were times when the wind would catch it just right, and that sousaphone would start playing me. <laughs> you could hear Dixie coming out of my ears. Bean Blossom, nice foot! <laughs> Roger Bean Blossom. He became a Chevy dealer. His wife ran away with a TV repairman. Poor Roger. Pearl Bodkin, Roger's future shifty wife. She loved afternoon TV soap operas. Oh, well. Our steady beat snapped and cracked and rolled on like an incessant surf. We learned the bitter facts of life while working our spit valves and bringing pageantry and pomp into the world of the blast furnace in the open heart. Ah, Schwartz, round, jovial, with the mind of a pumpkin. Listen, Schwartz, if you bang my bell one more time, forget about that stupid blind date. I can't help but I get dirt in my eyes. Ah. Collisions produced instant orthodontistry. A mouthpiece and the chop straightened out your teeth faster than Dr. Slicker ever could, and a heck of a lot cheaper. Come on, come on. Wilbur, Wilbur Duckworth, our driven maniacal come drum major. Three-time state twirling champion. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. With the soul of a true stormtrooper. Mr. Dirks, our band director. <laughs> the Willie Loman of the musical world. 
Juilliard, years of study, dreams of conducting the Vienna State Opera, and it had all come down to this. A high school marching band in the swirling dust of Indiana. Duckworth thought of the band as a panzer division, whereas Dirks saw us more as a mobile Baroque orchestra. The two concepts were not compatible, to say the least. That's what I call sloppy. You guys in the drum section, don't you ever listen to each other? Tomorrow is the biggest parade of the year, and for once we're not playing at some lousy football game. I want every one of you to take your instrument home with you today. You're going to practice at home. I want this band to sing tomorrow. I want everybody who sees that parade to go home remembering one thing, the Holman Marching Band. This is the 4th of July. Mr. Duckworth, let's see that countermarch again the way it's supposed to be performed. <laughs> This was Wilbur's last parade, his senior year. It was going to be the best, even if it killed us. That afternoon, he was going to march us until we had it right. Pageantry have always been inseparable. Ludlow Kissel, the neighborhood's rambling, solitary drunk. For 30 years, Kissel had worked at the roundhouse on the extra board. Now that meant that he was called in only during extreme emergencies. He invariably celebrated a day of work by holding up in the Bluebird Tavern for about a week. My mother and Mrs. Kissel were companions, sisters of the clothespin. Their laundry floated like great sails against the blue skies, and they sailed their ship against the unknown, the battle against dirt. Mrs. Kissel always had a vague air about her, as though she knew that her life had been one long mistake. She never admitted Lud was a drunk. Poor Lud's stomach's been acting up again. He's got nervous stomach, you know. Poor old Kissel, a true honest to John loser. But Mrs. Kissel loved him. So, I hear Ralph's got himself a job down at the mill. Uh-huh. She wanted to avoid the subject. My mother never mentioned work around Mrs. Kissel if she could help it. He's lucky, Ralph. It's only a part-time job. He's just a mail boy. I wish Lud could get on down at the mill. This is Ralph's new shirt. It washed up pretty good. The jelly stain's gone. Ralph's got a date tonight. That <laughs> nice Wanda Hickey? Mm -mm. Emily Schwartz called and asked me if I could get Ralph to take out her niece. Oh. She's visiting from Bloomington. Oh, that's nice. I'll probably go to the Orpheum, and this shirt will probably come back covered in butter from the popcorn. Ralph eats like a pig. How can you stand the sweater in the heat? Claire May likes it. Claire May likes it. Yeah. You're lucky she doesn't like earmuffs. Come on. Oh, come on. You You know, your old lady fixed me up good. Hey, I didn't know she was doing it. I didn't know she was doing it. You know, we're going to miss all the action tonight because of your fat cousin who's ugly and she wears braces. I thought we could take him to the orphan. They got a great picture. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait. Yeah, maybe I can get my old man to let me use the Chevy, too. Uh, for years, I had this principle. Absolutely no blind dates. I was a man of perception and taste, and life was short. So what time we gotta go on this great date? But, you know, there's a time in your life when you have to stop taking and begin to give a little. After all, Schwartz was my friend. Thanks a lot, Schwartz. You owe me one. Get 
ready, Ace. Put those burgers down and brace yourself. John's, what a greasy spoon. <laughs> Why we went there, I can't tell you. We just did. John's is in a mean, scrabbly neighborhood of cleaning shops, pool rooms, dusty places that sold trusses and wheelchairs. John's. What the hell is this? You gotta move those things if somebody comes in here and wants that boat. Come on, John, the place is empty. Poor John, all of his life he dreamed of having this great truck stop where truckers would come in and have his fantastic truck driver's food. But all he got was kids. Hey, Flick, where you been? Oh, no, not him. Oh, oh. You guys been to band practice, suckers. You know, kiddo, I don't know whether I should let you in here after the last time. Flick, skinny, mean, You're with the mind of a up. weasel. Yeah, how's that, uh, how's that cheeseburger coming? Yeah, where's my cheeseburger? You mean cherry coke, huh? How about going over to Wicker Park tonight and watch them shoot off some fireworks, huh? Me and Ralph got a date. Oh, and you and Ralph got a date. Well, going steady, eh? Now, my cousin from Bloomington's coming out to visit. My old lady wants me and Clara May to take her out. Sucker. Anybody who takes out a cousin deserves what they get. No wonder I was bugged. Our little social set, me and Schwartz and Flick, we were known for our sophisticated approach to the female problem. <laughs> this sport was known in our neighborhood as Scraggy. Hey, come on! Hey. It's pursued to this day all over America, from Waterville, Maine, to Brownsville, Texas. You think I really want to go out on a dumb date the night before the 4th of July if I didn't have to? Now, what's this broad look like? I haven't seen her since she was about 12. You ain't answered my question. She's kind of fat. It was braces, right? Yeah. And glasses? No, no. Oh, it looks like it's going to be a great evening. Oh, ugh. Bluebird, where schemes and dreams and neighborhood infidelities all blended together with the smell of stale beer and the swish of Gus's soggy rag. You know, the British have their pubs, the French their bistros. We have the Bluebird, the American Eagle Bar, the Dew Drop In, the Antlers Rest. <laughs> Bless our sainted neighborhood taverns, everyone. Oh boy, that tastes good. Nothing like good old draft beer. You can have them damn cans. Yeah, two tinny. It's gonna be a stinking hot fourth. You can believe me. Fry an egg on the hood of the oils out there. And make the world go away. I'm buying. Women. Gus, you want to hear a really hot one? You know what the old lady did this time? Would you believe it? She sent all the wash rags in the house in the mail. Would you believe it? What the hell for? It's some kind of a nutty chain letter. You, she sent it to the name on the top of the list. Would you believe it? I mean, they say men are dumb. So that's where all the wash rags went. Sent all the wash rags in the house in the mail. <laughs> for crying out loud. <laughs> she pretended the wash rags were in the laundry. I haven't gotten any wash rags yet. It's only been two weeks. Oh. <laughs> you should have heard guess who when he found out. I made the mistake of putting my last wash rag in that envelope. Blood had never noticed. Wait till I tell her I know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kissel? Is your wife in on this chain letter thing? Kissel, you got any wash rags? Kissel did not go to the Bluebird for small talk. Ah, my Uncle Carl's fireworks stand. Those shelves were lined with the greatest assortment of bliss and ecstasy this side of the arsenal at Fort Dix. Oh, is that you, Carl? Well, I hope you're keeping some goodies under the counter for me. What's it called? A green atomic devastator? That sounds great! You better save a couple for me. Uncle Carl, a true American entrepreneur. Every 4th of July, he sold fireworks. Every Christmas, he peddled a collection of scrawny Christmas trees. And he was a chain white owl smoker. <laughs> one year, he blew up his entire stand in one blinding red, white, and blue flash. <laughs> After that, he switched to Dutch Masters. I want to do it right this year, Carl. I get a little extra cash because of my bowling prize money. 
Uh, Roman candles. Let me see your Roman candles. Uh, I'll take them. Oh, listen, I better have some small stuff, too, uh, Carl. Here's some uh, bean ballers. Uh, Let me have some pinwheels. <laughs> I'm gonna need a couple of dozen of the uh, number one. Uh, number one. Cherry bombs. Ralph loves cherry bombs. Give me a couple of dozen of these. Guys. The sousaphone part of El Capitan is as dull as yesterday's dishwater. <laughs> when you're trying to play a tuba and think of a blind date at the same time, it's tough. Blind dates are like fishing in unknown waters. You never know what'll happen. At least it's going to be a change from Wanda Hickey. Wanda Hickey, oh wow. Hi, Ralph. <laughs> Every year, the neighbors waited for the old man's fireworks spectacular, and he knew it. Look at these beauties. Boy, oh boy. Hey, shut up! Will you stop fighting? I'll tell Mom! Chinese thunder bomb. <laughs> That's nice. Carl Sober. That's nice. Any wash rags come today? Thank you. Don't hold your breath. By the way, who'd you send our wash rags to? Mrs. Y. Y. Flirch of Fishigan, Michigan. Mrs. Y. Y. Flirch of Fishigan, Michigan? I bet her husband Claude is right this minute washing his face with my wash rag. She was the name at the top of the list. One born every minute. Most of them are women. What do you mean? <laughs> it's a wash rag chain letter. They're going to send me wash rags when I get to the top of the list. Shut up. If you get just one wash rag, they can call me the President of the United States. Boy, what a sucker. I gotta eat supper soon because that dumb date you fixed me up with. Thanks a lot. Emily Schwartz says she's a nice girl. Now you be nice to her, Ralph. Oh, there's a sandwich in the refrigerator. You gotta watch out for these uh, blind dates, Birdcage. That's a sucker's game. <laughs> That's how I met your mother. Salad. And you keep your hands off of that. I gotta go up and get dressed for that dumb blind date. Randy, now you be careful tomorrow. Here, Randy, look, this is a 30 ball Roman candle, huh? Vesuvius. Randy, this is a skyrocket. Wow. <laughs> I just don't like fireworks. Hey, Ma, where's the wash rag? Oh, I think uh, Mrs. Y.Y. Flirch of Fishigon, Michigan is using it. Give her a call, breadbasket. <laughs> there are about four times in a man's life when unexpectedly from out of the darkness, the blazing carbon lamp, the cosmic searchlight of truth shines full upon them. It is how we react to these moments that forever seals our fate. One crowd puts on its sunglasses, lights another cigar, and heads for the nearest plush French restaurant, sits down and orders a drink and ignores the whole thing. While we, the doomed, caught in the brilliant glare of illumination, see ourselves inescapably for what we are. Those moments happen when we are least able to fend them off. 
I caught the first one full in the face that night in the Orphea. Okay. Could I, uh, give me a, a good point? Schwartz, that skunk, he's late again. Probably Claire May had another hair fit. Who's who celebrities present include Linda Darnell and... Hi, Ralph. Romero. Ralph, this is my cousin, Pamela. Pamela, this is Ralph. Scott, I've hit the double jackpot on a blind date yet. Good Lord Almighty. In all my born days, I had never seen anything like her. Oh, wow. Oh, hi, Ralph. Pamela sure has changed. <laughs> uh, you're, uh... Pamela is Miss Junior Corn Blossom. She's here for the parade. Pleased to meet you. Ralph, is it? <laughs> I turned on the full candle power of my cute look. Pamela, I just love your hair. Do you want some good and plenties? <laughs> Granted, it wasn't very good, but it was the best ad lib I could come up with under the circumstances, what with my mind reeling and all. darkness we sat, popcorn crunching underfoot, ankle deep in candy wrappers and petrified gum wads. Me and Miss Junior Corn Blossom. This is so romantic. It's just like us. Yeah. Schwarzy. I feel not that I don't like you. For I do. I wouldn't do anything to upset you. Oh, I gotta be careful on how I make my big move. Give me your hand. Yeah. Make your move when they have that big kissing scene they have in all these dumb turkeys. Now. Now. Watch it. Watch it. searing insights of my life. Fat cousin wears braces and is ugly. For the first time, I saw myself clearly. I saw myself for what I was. Hi, Ralph. I am the blind date. Whoopie doe. Me, I am the teenage werewolf. get my arm back now without looking like a total fathead. You still think we have no destiny together? You kiss a girl and it doesn't mean anything to you. Just a kiss. You don't want to catch cold. I didn't say much the rest of the night. There wasn't much to be said. rolled in like a fat lady in a sauna. It was going to be a scorching fourth. What is more American than this day of picnics and parades, the patriotic celebration of freedom and the stars and stripes, and of course all of it accompanied by the sounds of gut-thumping explosions. Thank you. 
Sousaphones have a will of their own. They fight you every inch of the way. That was a big one. Started already? <laughs> later. I hope it holds off till after the picnic. I'm wearing my new dress. It's nice. Mmm, your bean casserole smells good. Blood's favorite dish. Well, getting late. Oh, don't worry. Parades never start on time anyway. See you later at the picnic. Bye-bye. The sound of cannonading from all points of the compass could be heard throughout the day. Did you hear that one? <laughs> punctuated by an occasional wail of a siren as the wounded were carted away for repairs. Mrs. Van Hoos is picking me up for the parade, and then we're going on to the picnic. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Ralph would be pleased if you would come and watch him march, you know. You see one parade, you've seen them all. Hmm. You going to the picnic? I'm going over to Charlie Nystrom's house. He's got a new month's TV. I don't know how they can afford that. Double-header with the Yankees. Ain't every day you get to see a free ball game. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, is the missus in? Yeah, she's right here. Come on in. She's not. Where do you want to lady? What the hell is this? My wash rays! My wash rays! My wash rays! <laughs> Reporters, fame. A picture on the front page of the Tribune. Local woman hits wash rag jackpot. Interviews. 17,336 wash rags in less than four minutes. It is now in the Guinness Book of World Records. The old man was really bugged. She won. She was famous, for God's sake. The only thing he ever won was a stupid lamp, and nobody cared. Duckworth was shaping up the troops. This was going to be his big day. <laughs> How big? None of us could even guess. Ah, the parade. The sounds. The crowds. The heat. All of mankind has always loved parades. I wonder when the first caveman got out, put a funny hat on his head, and marched out in front of the cave, and other guys came to watch him, and then others fell in behind him. But I love them. I love parades. We were all there, struggling through the heat, snaking our way through the ambient Indiana Sinclair refinery air for glory, and to thank God there is an America. And in a distant city, the White Sox were dropping another doubleheader. Mile after mile, we marched in the heat. <laughs> my lips were like hamburger. My ears were ringing. He got honorable mention for his bike decoration. Of course, uh, all the kids got honorable mention. No one realized that morning that Ludlow Kissel was about to enter legend. The eternal mill watched over it all, like a distant, ominous mountain range. hour 
where we marched. We were in the third rendition of El Capitan. There she was, in the brilliant sunlight, the beautiful Pamela. Mm. That's not her real name, of course. She went on to fame and fortune. She's now a household word. Oh, I was out class from the start. 105 degrees. The personages on the reviewing stand have been baking since 8 a.m. You could fry an egg on Mayor Bielefeld's head. Tucker marched us right into the middle of town. The parade had come alive. It was really moving. Now it was our turn. The champs were on the scene. The Holman High Marching Band. What's Duckworth doing? Suddenly he did an incredible thing. Duckworth stopped the whole parade. Marchers crashed into each other for two miles back. What's he doing? He went into his prize-winning repertoire, the routine that had won him the national championship. Now, that's something he never did in a parade. The officials were confused. He was doing his famous double baton dazzler. First the left one higher, and then the right one higher, and then the left one higher, and then the right one higher, and then the left one higher, and then the right one higher. My God, what was he going to do? And then all of a sudden, his right baton spun high up over the telephone wires. Good Lord, no! It's over the high-tension wires! And then it began to drop! And then... My God, he blew the main fuse! The fuse that ran the whole county! Uh, what the hell? What's happening? Duckworth's back was as straight as a ramrod as he marched us off. Had he planned it, the supreme baton trick of his career? His final statement to home in Indiana and the rotten, stinking, smelly steel mills? <laughs> no one ever knew for sure. We moved into a side street and headed back towards school. The parade was over. Duckworth never looked back. The 4th of July picnic. School, church, company, or whatever. It's classically American. They don't do this anywhere else. Can you imagine people in Siberia having a picnic? <laughs> Hooray for potato salad, baked beans, and hot dogs. Hot dogs, hot dogs, get your hot dogs. Come on, hurry up. What do you have? Eat up, Schwartz. I'm buying. Come on, hurry up. Moving on. Give me four. Four of them, okay. Onions? Onions? Yeah, relish chip. All right. Let's get them all moving. Everybody wants them. Every mother had her special covered dish contribution. Professional pride was at stake. My mother's, her sweet and sour Bavarian glockenspiel potato salad. She always told everyone that was handed down from her grandmother. Actually, she got it from Good Housekeeping magazine. <laughs> Eat them beans. Duckworth, he really did it this time. Yeah, blew up half of Gary. My mom's iron burnt up. <laughs> Jesus, call us flat. Cut it out! Come on, Flick. Schwartz, a couple of brownies. 
Well, paid for. Well, I think my hot dog. You guys going in the uh, sack race? Maybe. Yeah, me and Kissel are going in it. I already got a buyer for the radio. Wait till that rat gets a load of us blowing him off the course. Schwartz and I have been practicing. We've been practicing behind his garage for two weeks. Two Zenith portable radios. <laughs> oh, boy, we meant business. Hey, Schwartz, another brownie? Yeah, thanks. Hey, buddy, ready? Let's kill him. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, set to go now for him a single line. A single line. A single line, that's it, all abreast. You all set? May the best payer win. All abreast, single line. We set to go. On your mark. Get set. We're moving out. Training and practice always pays. Me and Schwartz, we're already three lengths ahead of the field. We're doing it! We're doing it! That did happen. Look, look, I can feel Schwartz hobbling next to me. Come on, Schwartz. Up and down he went. Come on, Schwartz. There was this sound. I could hear his stomach like a giant effluvia of lava bulging out of him. Wah! Pouring out over me. Use brownies. Oh, my God. And those hot dogs all over my feet. Oh! Oh. It was then that I learned one of life's great lessons. Be careful who you tie yourself up with. Let me tell you, buddy, it could kill you in the end. That rotten crumb had pranked us. Oh, that uh, buying all those hot dogs for Schwartz. He won. Oh, that's the excitement. The sack race is just finishing. Oh, that's fun, isn't it? Ludlow Kissel's private clock told him that now was the time to strike. He began to move. Men are driven by forces beyond their control. Demons howling in the soul. Kissel knew what he had to do. Hello? Hey, Zudok. I don't know. Now, the TV blew up in the second game. The yeah, damnedest thing. The first inning. Ah, uh, Mrs. Kissel. Dedicated reader of true romances. She was the kind of woman who would play the piano while the Titanic sank. Great Scott, that looks like some kind of mortar shell. Maybe Russian in origin. Wait a minute, Sudan. Kissel was about to celebrate the founding of our nation, which had provided such a bounteous life for him and his. Sudan, I'll call you back. Something's happening out front. Holy smoke! Look at that. 
inside with me, Randy. We're going to go hide in the basement. Oh, 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 Where is it? Where is that nutty thing? It's gone! <laughs> it's coming this way! <laughs> That house is now an official historic shrine. There's a plaque on it that says Lud Kissel lived here. Lud Kissel became part of the timeless folklore of Indiana. Stories have been told during long winters and folk songs written about him. disappeared forever. He never came back. Mrs. Kissel? <laughs> well, she married a man named Clarence, made a fortune in army surplus brass faucets, living in Palm Beach in indolent ease. <laughs> she loves him, too. Midnight, and the old man fired his first shot. <laughs> orchestrated his great fireworks displays with superb artistry. Oh, look at that thing. That's fantastic. Oh, wow, look at those colors. Oh, you can feel the earth shake. and faster and higher and higher. The smoke rose in great billowing clouds. <laughs> like some kind of a gigantic Leopold Stokowski orchestrating thunder and lightning.
each year, the old man always created a spectacular surprise finale. Each year it was different. All of his ammunition was carefully laid out. Year after year, he had topped himself. Well, he began this year with his Roman candles. His Roman candle work was acknowledged to be by far the best of the state. Woo! Up they went, ball after ball. It was all rhythm. Look at those movements. Oh, man. Great Scott! One of his Roman candles struck back. What an artist. Everyone in the crowd was convinced that his flaming shirt was part of the show. It was his finest hour. It did him. He found himself. He kicked over one of his rockets. Hey, toss me a slab of salami there, Birdcage. Want any bread? Toss me an onion. <laughs> ah, the old man always said that a good onion was just like a sexual experience. That Chinese thunder bomb was really something. Wasn't that a doozy? <laughs> hey, how was the parade, uh, Jockstrap? I understand they had Miss Junior Corn Blossom there. I'd like to have a look at that babe. <laughs> She's all right. Too skinny. What? We're tired as a used Studebaker. <laughs> what a day. What a day. Well, I'm gonna hit the hay. Hey, Dad. Greatest Fourth of July I ever seen. Yep, she was. measure their lives by holidays, Christmas, Easter, birthday, Thanksgiving, the 4th of July, like mileposts in the picket fence of the years that stretches on and on and on through our lives. But those holidays when you're young, they're the sweetest of all. You remember them forever. That great 4th of July so long ago, like all the others, was gone. Gone with the wind. Boy, that was sure some for it. The old man was a real gas. <laughs> ah, life is just a long, endless story. I think I'll shoot off a couple of cherry bombs just to salute the old guy. <laughs> oh. Good old I-95, my old friend. I love it. I love it. <laughs> What'd I tell you about south of the border? Did you ever see anything like it? <laughs> hey, well, listen. I'm going to tell you a place that even tops this. It's called Little America. It's out in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I had just gotten out of the army, see, and I arrived at this place just as they had the biggest snowstorm in their years. Night new and blue Hawaii. 
At 10 o'clock tonight, Ellen West, Portrait of an Obsession. It's the story of a young 19th century woman, played by local actress Lisa Britt, and her struggle with anorexia, which leads to eventual self-destruction. Ellen West, Portrait of an Obsession, is on at 10 o'clock. That was the final program of American Playhouse for the current season. American Playhouse will return in January of 1984. Speaking of returning, Alistair Cook's America returns to Channel 9 this coming Saturday night at 8 o'clock. It's his personal history of the United States. Saturday night at 8. Oh, are we?